for those of you who um, don't know us in the history of True Life, I just wanted to um, thank you all for coming out and celebrating with us on the eve of New Year's Eve as we launch our new project for 2011. Um, I'm extremely excited. This, is, um, this will be our first venture. It's entitled The Tombs, and it's basically a short film that is about a man's three-day journey through the um, central book and jail system known as The Tombs. You're familiar with The Tombs, the term, and what this, this thing is about? Oh, yes, indeed. Like I said, they're 21 years on the, on the job. Officers bring them in, and when court is done, we, correction officers, we basically sit on, on the perps or the guys, the detainees, or the individuals who have caught the following day. So sometimes they can stay there anywhere between 24 to 72 hours. Listen, fate is a powerful thing. Amen. You know, um, all in the same week, I started getting, um, I started receiving phone calls from some of my team telling me, look, man, you know, we haven't done anything since Blackout. We need to get back in the game. We need to put something out there, whether it be a short feature or whatever. Forget about finances. We will lay out all the resources, and I want to give um, those brothers their acknowledgement. Um, this is my partner in DP, Ben Wolf. Um, Jerry and I will watch a bunch of movies together and talk about it. Work on your relationships with the director, that's super important. Jerry and I have shot just about all of Jerry's films, so we, we uh, get along well and I think we understand each other pretty well. And, uh, that's pretty important. It's a really important collaboration. And it wasn't a coincidence that that same week I got a call from my man Diverse, who's also one of the producers on this project. I want to give him a shout. I met Jerry on the More Infinity, yo. Oh, wow. Okay. I met Jerry when my homeboy was in the More Infinity, and we've been friends ever since. Okay. I did some music for a couple of his movies, and I, I was in Blackout. I was the music supervisor for Blackout. So, me, that's my dude. Okay. So, you guys got big plans for next year, right? Yes. That's this is step is. one. This right here is step one. Step after that is um, sitting in, in the front row with Steven Spielberg, man. Beating him for $50 at the Carrot Game. What's that? They say if you reach for perfection, you should at least achieve excellence. That's what I, I live by that. You know, I, I, and I, I try to keep my team on the same path. I'll send, I'll literally send my DP and my producers um, emails of, uh, of the Oscar nomination <laughs> and let them know this is where we're going next year. So have, go in with that spirit because everything has a spirit. Everything has an energy. And if you go in with it, I believe you can achieve it. Casey, the casting agent, called me and uh, told me about the project and uh, wanted to know if I'd be interested. I told her to send me the script and I fell in love with the script when I read the script. And um, I fell in love with the lead character, so I, I came and asked her to audition for the lead and ended up booking the lead by the risk of God, you know. So tell me, when they first called you, was it for the lead? No way. Wow. Okay, so did you did you come and read for the role you wanted, or did you insist on reading for the lead instead? You know, uh, actors want to know this kind of stuff. I wanted to read for the lead. I, I told him I didn't want to read for anything else. I wanted to read for the lead. So he gave me the opportunity, which so, is, you know, good. So you were ready, basically, for all or nothing type of a situation? Kind of. You know, it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, you, you, you know what the, what the, how the business is. They want to... Uh, bigger name and that whole thing so you, you go in and you just try to you know change their mind and see if you can change their mind you know and uh it actually worked out i might have done something else who knows but uh, you know that's in the past now we look to the future it's been a strong strong motivational factor and then you know she's laying in the cut real smooth and quiet mm -hmm. but i also want to acknowledge tammy roman as well <laughs> Stepping up behind the scenes quietly, making it happen. Um, someone who's built me side by side, who came all the way in from LA to help me make this thing happen. I want to thank Casey DeVoe, my casting director. What inspired you to come out here and help Jerry Lamoth bring the right people onto this thing? Well, you know, Jerry and I go way back. For one, I used to intern for him. I interned for his uh, feature film, Blackout, in 2006, the one uh, starring Zoe Saldana and Jeffrey Wright. Intern meaning I did everything on that film from get water to help the producers, to help the first AD, to hold the boom. 
So uh, we just had a relationship since then, and he's seen my growth process, and he called me in on the project, and I said, absolutely, of course. I would love to work with Jerry again. Okay. So that's what got it. So when you read the script, right, everyone keeps talking about the script yeah. and how good it is. Yeah. How do you go from reading a script to deciding who you're going to call in? The characters kind of jump out to you on the page, especially if it's very well written, which it was. Uh, the minute that you start reading the script, I, I can't really explain what happens. A whole bunch of actors just start popping into your brain, just randomly. The the the, the minute that you read, and it and it is. Uh, a combination of maybe you have seen these actors uh, do something similar to it and a combination of who you think is strong enough and a combination of the breakdown itself. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of a, of a lot of things. Casey brought me in. She uh, wanted me to come in and read for the judge, gave me the sides for the district attorney, I read for the district attorney, and they decided, we like him as a district attorney. Ms. Deidre Tate is in the building. She was the associate yeah. producer of Blackout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Papa Smurf from Amor Infinity, who's now known as. Now the bring me a hop! Yeah! Bring me a hop! I need some section 8. <laughs> I have a lot of friends and family and supporters who've been supportive of my work for over 10 years, literally, that are here. I want to acknowledge all of you as well and let you know that I thank you. Well, I'm one of those actors that don't have any representation, so every now and then, a manager will call me and throw me some chitlins, and so this manager called me out the blue that hasn't called me in six months, and said, hey Rob, I got an audition for you. I said, oh, well hopefully these chitlins are all in one tack that I can just fry them up and not have to put them and piece them together. You haven't worked yet, and uh, I see you eating and drinking, I mean, what kind of production is this, hey, I mean, man. this is the kind of fun you have on a Jerry Lamar film, baby. I'm telling you, this is a short. Imagine the feature. You must get a butler. Hey, man, I could take it, you know what I mean? But I hope she got a nice small waist and a round ass. <laughs> so I went into the audition, found out Casey was Casey DeVoe was all, all, uh, casting it. So I walked in, saw that, had about nine people in the room. Jerry Lamar did. Everybody was there, eyes on me. And I did what I do, baby. Knocked it out the motherfucking park. Word is that Jerry Lamoth came to the Directing Actors Gym, saw your performance, and next thing you know, you're in an audition. And the word is, there were no callbacks for your role. You were offered the role. What would you say to an actor? What's the, the quickest way to move quick and, and get your career going fast? To move quick? Yeah, oh, get your career know, going. There's a way to move quick, but... Uh, Training, man. A lot of a lot of classes. Like I've taken a lot of classes. So uh, you and a lot of hustle. I got a lot of I got a lot of hustle. I don't stop. I don't ever stop hustling. So at one point you were taking four classes a week. Correct. For how long? I did that for two and a half years. What do you think nailed it for you? Uh, grace of God. I thought I bombed. I thought I like flopped. And um, but uh, they liked what they saw. So I'm here now. That's for okay. Real, for real. Did you get any direction while you were in the audition room? that you yeah, adjusted I, to. I did, I did. I came in, you know, I was like, I'm gonna be this righteous, serious brother. Came in, did a serious, and he's like, nah, this is more comedic kind of role. So I'm like, oh, man, that's why I thought I flopped it. But then he told me to do it over, you know what I'm saying? I had a little more comedic flair to it. And I did that, and I'm here now. Miles, what's going on? Of course, we know you from the Directing Actors Gym. You've been featured yes. several times. Yes, you always that. come with it. You, you adjust the direction really well. Thank you. So tell us about what brought you here today and what got you cast in this project. First of all, how'd you hear about it? Well, um, actually, it was through Casey DeVoe. Um, I uh, auditioned for her like a while back, and she liked my work. She brought me in for another project. But for this one right here, um, I made it all the way to the test shoot. I'm not actually cast. I'm okay. just filling in for another person who's not here, okay. but I still like to be a part of the project anyway, you know, always love the support. What's good? Rumor has it. Nah, no, no, don't put no rumors out there. <laughs> nope. You're not getting no confession out of me. My whole, okay. My whole thing is under wraps. Okay, so so, so no tell talk. me, what, what's going on with you? What what you got going on? Uh, I'm just chilling, man. I'm, I'm doing a family thing. So you're you know here what to what support the film? Yeah, I'm here And you're not cast in the film? You, you... Uh, I'm, I'm here to support, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I hear you. I'm, 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 I'm going to put it like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes great projects come along and sometimes it just don't work out and you can't do it, you know, but you still support it some way, somehow, you know? So, um, I came in, I delivered. 
yeah, I delivered. You know, but um, he said he, he put it down. I'm just saying that's what I heard. Yeah. The, you know, the bro was mine, but I couldn't do it. Basically, okay. You know, okay. And, and that was, was a conflict of interest, um, in the sense of uh, the dates conflicted with my schedule. So you know, I'm off the. You know, I couldn't do the project on those days, but I'm here to support. You know, that's what independent creative community is all about. You know, even if I can't do the main thing, I'm here to do the reading. I'm here to support. I'd probably be at the rap party or whatever. You know, that's, that's what's what it's up. about. That's what's you know, up. I'm here to support uh, Jerry. You know, big, big, big ups to you. Because that's a great project. The script is phenomenal. Um, the tunes is, is definitely eye-catching. Um, a lot of knowledge is being dropped. Shout out to my little sis. You know, I love you, KC. You know, you did your thing. All right. What are you up to these days? Uh, well, you know, just, just grinding and trying to pursue that uh, goal to Hollywood. That's about it, man. That's what's up. Well, you know what? Hollywood's going to come to you, brother. Oh, that's, that's how I would like it to come. Watch and see 2011. 2011? Yeah. 2011. Everybody right. hear that? Hollywood coming to you. He said Hollywood coming. I'm a man of a few words. I let the work speak for itself. But we're going to kill the festival game next year. We're coming in. We're letting them know that we're here. We're going to launch the new company, Sleep Study Entertainment. And we're going to get it running.